Hello and welcome back. Let's see how we can implement the random walk metropolis algorithm in R. So first thing we need is a target density. That's a method or will be a method to generate samples from a given distribution so we get to pick the distribution. What I want to do here is I want to use a made up distribution just for this example. And let's say we are going to use the density sum normalizing constant times cosine of x squared times e to the minus 0.3 absolute value of x. So to give you a sense of what that looks like and to give you an idea why I'm choosing that density, I'll do a plot. So let's say we plot this over this x range and we do plot, let's call the density pi straight away because that's how it was called in the algorithm. So let's say pi is function x and I leave out the constant here. We need to talk about this. So pi x and then I plot x against pi of x as a line plot. That is the density we are going to generate samples from, except I left out the constant, the one over z. And I'm doing this because a, we don't know z, and b, we will see in a minute, we don't actually need z. So let's not worry about this now. So what you see is in the center, there is a biggish peak, so that means the highest probability for this distribution will be to be close to zero. Then this cosine term here includes oscillations, so you see there are secondary peaks at presumably minus pi and plus pi and minus 2 pi and plus 2 pi. And that term here, e to the minus 0.3 absolute value of x, that makes it decay to both sides. And that is what gives it a chance to have finite integrals, this curve. And then there, we know there is a constant z, namely the integral of this curve, to make it integrate to 1 and be a density. So the Markov chain we get if the distribution of xt has this density, we expect it to be typically at multiples of pi, positive or negative. And it can also be at other values, but it should not, for example, be at pi over 2 or minus pi over 2, because at these values the density is 0. So let's see how we do that. I comment this out, because we don't need the plot anymore, and we now can implement the algorithm. So let's do it straight away. We need to choose an x0. And x0 we know must be a value where pi is positive. And in the plot we see 0 with a good choice, and it seems like a typical value. Then for j in, let's just do 10 steps for now, like that. We need to generate a proposal. So we do yj is something. And now what we said was for random walk metropolis, the proposal equals the previous state, so we need name for the previous state. I'll use xj, I need to introduce this. And then we need to add an increment, which must be from a centered distribution. I said typically that is a normal distribution, so let's do that here. Our norm, we just need one number, and we need to choose some sigma here, which we'll fix later. Let's just take sigma equals one. Now, and have this warning here because xj is undefined currently, so let's rename x0 to xj like I did before. Then that's defined, but that is still the value from the previous step. And then with the except reject, redefine xj in a minute. So uj is r unif one sample in the range from 0 to 1. That's what we'll use to make the random decision. And then xj, the new value of the Markov chain is, if we accept, it will be yj, and otherwise it will be the old value. We accept if uj is less than alpha applied to xj and yj. And we just need to define alpha. alpha for random walk metropolis, we know is the minimum of pi of y divided by pi of x with one. Good. Now is the moment where we need to worry about this constant here. Remember when I defined pi here, I left out the constant and I argued a, we don't know it and b, we won't need it. So let's just think what would have happened 
if we had C constant. So let's just call it C instead of one over Z. Then we have C times pi here, and we would have C times pi here, maybe with brackets. But what you see is it cancels. So whatever the value of this one over Z is, it's in the numerator and denominator, it cancels. So we don't actually need it. So if we do that, we are good with the pi I defined without C constant, because it's only used in alpha. And in alpha, it's used in a way that any constants in front cancel. We come back to that later, but for now, let's just be happy we can do it like this. And now let's run that. So we do plot xj. Ah, I did not actually store the value, so that was just the final value. So say xn, I just wrote as before, I say n is how many samples do we want? Let's stick with 10 for now. And we do then 1 to n. Here we do a vector of length n. And here we just say xj is xj. Let's run that again. And I need to plot x. So we see here that looks wrong. The values keep going up. Can you spot the mistake? Something is wrong with my proposals. The process is meant to typically be close to zero. Instead, it's going up and up and up and up. So I believe the mistake must be here. And if you look, it, it's obvious R norm has two arguments, mean and standard deviation. And I accidentally set the mean to sigma rather than the standard deviation. So let's do it like that. I'll say the standard deviation is sigma plot x. That looks more like what I imagined. So that process moves around and it's not going too far from zero. So to get a better look, let's do 1000 step and let's do plot x type is L. And let's add these spaces to make R Studio happy and these spaces and let's see what we get. So we get certainly a process which moves and let's put horizontal lines at the multiples of pi. So minus two times pi, minus pi, zero, pi, and two times pi. Ah, and now I caused the problem. Namely, I called this function pi, which caused it to override the built-in value pi, which is 3.1415. So what do I do? I think I just type pi here. I could rename my function two. And uh, two times, let's see what happens here. This does not look as good as I hoped. Maybe something is still wrong. I made a rather silly mistake here. Namely, you see I just wrote an assignment instead of a comparison, though that was meant to be less than or equal to. This looks much better. Now, I think we have solved the problem. So you, know, you see now there are stretches where the process stays close to zero. There are stretches where the process stays close to pi. And it sometimes jumps between C states and it is typically close to zero. I think that could very well be a sample of this distribution. So let's do a histogram. That needs a bit of refining. So first, maybe let's do 10,000 values. Let's comment this out and instead do par smaller margins. And then we do hist x, we do more breaks, like 50, and we leave out the title. So that's the histogram. And I can do prop equals true to get it so that we can compare it for a density. But this time around, we cannot easily plot the density line on top of that because we don't know the leading constant. So we can do lines x and pi of x, but again, we don't know the constant, so that will be scaled wrong and we will need to play a bit with it, but still we should be able to see something. And though that is too large, so let's just experimentally divide it by two, make it red. That looks better, but still not quite right. I divide by four maybe, that could be about right. So let's do a non-messed up plot with maybe 80 bars. I divide it by too much now, but you see, that could very well be a fit. Now, there is one thing I want to show you. Let's just uncomment this. So if I run these, I go back to a thousand steps. So we do that and to the plot, that looks okay. So I just want to show you what's the effect of sigma. And for that, looking ahead, I will just fix 
the y range because that is going to change. So let's say we do the y range from minus eight to eight and we are not doing that plot for now. So that's what happens for sigma equals one. Now let's make sigma smaller. Let's go extreme and do it 0.1. So you see that is totally different. In this case, the proposals are very close to the previous value. And that means we cannot cross these gaps in the density anymore. And values which fall into the gap will have small pi of y. That's the density of the proposed value. If the proposed value is in a gap, that is small. So the probability of accepting them is small. And that's what we want, really. We don't want values in the gaps. But in this case, if sigma is so small, it just fails to cross the gaps. Let's do that again. Here it crossed it once. Here not, not. So you see it sometimes crosses over to another of these wells, but it's rare. That makes sampling go badly wrong. So if I do the histogram here, you see that histogram kind of looks okay, but it has only two of the peaks and it does really not look very good and it's missing the main characteristics of this distribution. So that is small sigma. Let's do large sigma. So you see here the plot is going very spiky. And if you look what's going on here, like around 600, there are flat stretches in the plot. And like at around 800, there's another one. And I will make sigma slightly larger. Let's try 30 to make that more extreme. And what's happening here is with large sigma, the proposals are always far away from the previous step. Sigma is the standard deviation. That means we can jump 30 to the left or the right quite easily. And that brings us in the realm where the density is quite small in general, and we are very unlikely to accept because pi is small. So in this case, if we jump too far, we reject quite often. And if we reject quite often, you saw what happens, then we get these flat bits in the pool, if I do 500. So in this case, you see what happened. We stayed at zero a long time. Then by good luck, we hit the well at minus pi, stayed there a bit, and then we jumped inside this well a bit, and then we jumped back. But that process doesn't move very much at all. So that has also gone wrong. And the important thing to realize is there are good values of sigma in the middle. So one can discuss whether one is better or two is better or 0.5 is better for that example. But I would say 0.1 is clearly bad and 100 is also clearly bad because here it's constant so long so it visits only very few values. So if you are using random walk metropolis sampling with normally distributed increments, you will need to think about your variance and you will need to do plots like this to get a sense of how often does it reject and does it move enough. So that's all I wanted to show you here about random walk metropolis sampling. What you should do now is to go back to the book and reread section 4.1.3 or maybe read it for the first time and make sure that you can line up everything you remember from the videos with what's written in the text. And then afterwards, in the next video, I discuss another variant of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, and that one will be called the independent sampler. So see you in the next video.